If a vision means the approval of the gods, then I don't see why I should want one. In fact, I find it quite insulting. It's like trying to say everything I've ever achieved is all thanks to the gods looking out for me. Well, I got to where I am today through my own hard work. The gods had nothing to do with it. Oh, so... Rex Lapis wanted me to have power beyond the average mortal so that I can be a great leader? Huh. I like to think I'd do an admirable job even without his blessing. Yeah, I'll show him. I won't give him any reason to be disappointed with me. The gentleman from the Wangsheng funeral parlor? Hmm. Clearly he's an extremely learned individual. And I do have a lot of respect for him. But his mindset is too traditional for me. He thinks in the same tired old terms as Rex Lapis did. If he were more of an original thinker, I'm sure he'd be a great asset to me in reaching my objectives. That captain is always flouting the rules, and her personality really rubs people the wrong way. That said, the Crux fleet is indispensable to Liyue Harbor. It's a bit of an art, knowing when to enforce the rules and when it's in everyone's interest to be more lenient. <laughs> Thing is, the Tianquan is supposed to be the one enforcing the rules, but she always seems to be too busy. We do work together, but we couldn't be more opposite personality-wise. To her, Liyue Harbor is nothing more than a marketplace, and she'll do anything as long as it makes money for her. Doesn't she have any principles? Hmm... Or maybe turning a profit is her principle. Since Rex Lapis left us, we've actually found some common ground. I was quite judgmental of her in the past. And we still fundamentally disagree on a number of issues. But in the current climate, I have to say I count her as a comrade in arms. <laughs> Having said that, I ordered a Lucent Crescent from Mingxing Jewelry three months in advance. And when it was finally time to pick it up, they told me Ningguang had bought up the last few months' worth of Lucent Crescents for herself by paying double the price. <sighs> she can be such a pain. You know what? I think her music rocks. Too noisy by traditional standards, for sure, but I don't care. Good music is good music, and good music should reach the widest possible audience. Everyone has faith in Dr. Baiju's medical skills. He's the right guy to go to when you can't figure out what's wrong with you. Oh, the rumors, you say? The only one that I know for a fact is true is how disgusting his medicine tastes. It's not just the kids who find it bitter. It's left me with some horrible memories, too. Yeah, the up-and-coming chef from Wanmin Restaurant. I get that she's gifted and everything. I just think her cooking can be a bit... hit or miss. I was all ready to hire her for a small banquet once and give her full control over the menu. But the amount of lizard and slime in her sample dishes quickly turned me off that idea. I've heard a story. He was born into a well-to-do family, but wasn't keen on the family business. So he now devotes his time to being an envoy of justice. I have huge respect for that. Not everyone has the guts to follow their dreams when it means breaking with a long-standing family tradition. I feel like now that we live in the age of mankind's rule, it's time for the legendary boy Adeptus to be released from duty. We no longer need a defender of that kind, because we are capable of working through the challenges we face on our own strength. Who knows what Rex Lapis must have done to inspire such blind devotion from Ganyu. But her reluctance to be critical is not without its advantages. In the workplace, she'll carry out my instructions to the letter, even when I can tell she has her reservations. It's a good attitude to have as a career professional. I find myself getting a second opinion from her a lot these days. Lots of things come up that I just have no idea about. And of everyone in Liyue, she's probably the most familiar with Rex Lapis. <laughs> I feel a bit awkward, though, because I used to be openly disparaging of Rex Lapis in front of her. But she doesn't seem to mind, so I guess I've got nothing to worry about. When you're passing by Huyu Tea House and have to squeeze your way through the biggest crowd you've seen in your life, that's when you know Yunjin's on stage performing. There's not a merchant in Liyue who wouldn't buy up the place if they had the chance. And Yunjin's the reason it would be worth every mora. Since Rex Lapis left us, the question of Liyue's future has been on my mind constantly. In addition to reviewing his own past deeds, 
I've been researching the other Archon's modes of governance, too. Mondstadt's god is the one who baffles me the most, though. How exactly do any of his actions contribute to the longevity of Mondstadt? It's completely beyond me. The way I see it, the law is a summary of things done the right way in the past. However, it should also be continuously adapted and improved to match the needs of the present. Given that Liyue is about to undergo a radical transformation, legal talent is in great demand. Hmm. With an assistant like Yenfei, I could spare myself a great deal of trouble. Never mince your words with me, okay? Yu Hung's just a title. I'll not have you treading on eggshells around me just because of my status. Say what's on your mind. Always. That's what makes you unique. And it's the thing I admire about you the most. Thank <laughs> you. 